Hello, my name is John Davidson, and, and this video is going to be the first of a series of videos that I, I plan on doing um, about the notion of infinity and infinitesimal. These are two very uh, difficult notions to confront mathematically. We think of infinity as, as uh, large without bound, and infinitesimal as, as so small that you could never see it no matter how much you magnify it, but yet it's still, it's still there. Um, so these, uh, it turns out, uh, both these, infinity and infinitesimal, both play a, a very significant role in calculus and, and beyond in mathematics. Um, and we really, in the math world, we didn't really start to understand infinity and infinitesimal until around the, the 1850s and then uh, on into the um, 20th century. So um, let's begin. We go back to ancient Greece is where this um, first very troubling notion of infinity came up that I'm, I'm aware of. And um, there was a philosopher named Parmenides who argued that nothing in our physical universe ever moves. There is no motion at all. And everything that we perceive is perception of the senses. It's, it's an illusion of the mind. Um, Parmenides had an argument with another philosopher, whose name escaped me, escapes me, who argued that everything was in motion. And uh, actually this other philosopher was uh, much closer to the truth because even though this board appears to not be in motion, if you were to magnify it down to the subatomic level, you would see motion. You would see vibration of, of atoms and molecules and particles. So anyway, it's, um, it's neat that they were thinking about this stuff uh, well over 2,000 years ago. All right, well, um, Parmenides' uh, most famous follower was Zeno. And uh, Zeno is, is spelled either with a Z or an X. I like to use X, but I don't think there's a, a specific right way to do this. Zeno was famous for constructing uh, some arguments called paradoxes, in which he challenged the, the notion that we perceive motion. And um, his most famous one is simply called Zeno's Paradox. And that's what I want to present to you now. So Zeno made this argument. He said, let's, let's run a foot race between a turtle and Achilles. Achilles was the great warrior athlete, uh, legendary uh, guy of the day. All right, so, and, and I am a terrible artist. I won't even attempt to, to draw a decent picture of a turtle. But suppose this is our turtle. And suppose this is Achilles, and again, I you know, can stick figures is about all I can do with, with, with my art, although this would be Achilles' heel. All right. Um, we start the foot race, but Zeno says the turtle gets a head start. So they begin the race, and Achilles runs up to where the turtle began. Well, the turtle has has moved forward. Not as far, but the turtle is still ahead of Achilles. And then, okay, in the second stage of this race, Achilles runs up to where the turtle was, and the turtle has moved forward. And the third stage, Achilles moves up to the place where the turtle was at the end of the second stage, and guess what? Not surprisingly, the turtle has moved ahead again. And so he says, look, you can continue this process ad infinitum, ad nauseum, and yet Achilles is never going to catch the turtle. And so when you see Achilles run past the turtle, it's an illusion of the senses. It really didn't happen. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I don't know. To my modern way of thinking, Zeno was quite a prankster. Uh, this, this caused a bit of a stir in the philosophic world that um, kept going for about 2,000 years. It, it, was, it was really um, quite a long time before we could find the flaw in this argument. But uh, part of the basis, actually the basis for this argument, is the notion that uh, you cannot add an infinite number of numbers and get some kind of finite result. And so let me, let me illustrate. What happens if I take a half and I add one-fourth. I add a half of a half, one-fourth. Well, that gives me 
three fourths. Now what happens if I take a half and add a fourth, and then take half of one fourth, which is one eighth, and add that? I'll get, it turns out, I'll get seven eighths. Let's do it one more time. If I take a half, plus a half of a half, plus a half of a half of a half, and yet another half, one half plus one fourth plus one eighth plus one sixteenth, it turns out this equals to 15 over 16. So you can ask the question, well, what happens if I were to add an infinite string of, of these particular numbers? So the, the, the three dots, the ellipsis, tells us that we're going to continue to add in the same pattern. Um, well, in, in ancient Greece, they would say, well, this is, this is preposterous. You, you cannot add an infinite number of numbers. Um, there's no time for it, and it would be infinitely large. Well, um, okay. It was in mathematics, specifically when we... Uh, started learning about calculus and formulating the language for calculus that we were able to resolve this issue. And I'll have to save that for another video, but you can probably guess what's going to happen. If you keep going half and half and half and half and half and half, you're getting closer and closer to one. And so really there is an answer to this problem, and yes, it is possible to add infinitely many numbers. That will equal to one, and yes, Achilles is going to catch the turtle and then pass it. And so I wanted you to see the similarity of this argument and Zeno's paradox because we're adding these distances until some point it matches the turtles. And even though there's infinitely many of them. So we'll uh, justify this a little more formally in a future video. But, but I hope you uh, are, are, took an interest in this. Um, and there's, a, there's an awfully lot to say about infinity and all the, all the rather weird things that come up about it.